Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, Old Nicholas Black, welcoming you back to another chilling episode of Black Scary Stories. Tonight, we delve into the heart of London, where the summer of 2016 bore witness to a tale that would send shivers down the spine of even the bravest souls. Our story, though, revolves around Tasha, a fearless journalist who dared to uncover a curse that has haunted a lineage for centuries, a stolen relic, an ancient curse, and an entity that refuses to rest. Prepare yourselves, for tonight we recount the chilling tale of the exorcism of London, the story of Kennedy Ife. The ancient streets of London, with their storied walls and echoing footfalls, have seen many tales unfold, but none so chilling as the story that came to light in the late summer of 2016. Tasha, a local journalist, had heard murmurings about strange going-ons in the Eiffel household. Whispers spoke of possessions, exorcisms, and a family pushed to its brink. The story was too intriguing to resist. Delving into the case, she reached out to local sources, digging up records and old acquaintances who knew the family. The Eif residence was a grand Victorian edifice that towered over its neighbors. It had seen better days, but its stature still commanded respect. Inside its walls, the atmosphere was laden with an ominous tension that one could almost taste. Kennedy, the 26-year-old son, had always been a beacon of health and vitality. But that fateful August, something changed. Initially, it started with complaints of a sore throat, which the family dismissed as a passing ailment. But then, Kennedy's behavior grew increasingly bizarre. He became violent, speaking of snakes writhing within him, acting out with unimaginable strength. As Tasha uncovered more details, she found that the family believed deeply in spiritual possession. They thought Kennedy had been overtaken by a malevolent entity. And so, driven by fear and desperation, they decided to take matters into their own hands. One evening, as the sun set and the sky turned a dark shade of purple, Kennedy's family decided to perform an exorcism, led by the patriarch, Kenneth Life. The family gathered in Kennedy's room, where he was bound to his bed. The room was dimly lit, the air thick with the scent of incense. Prayers and chants filled the space, growing louder with every passing hour. Each family member took turns praying over Kennedy, trying to cast out the entity that had taken hold. But as the hours turned into days, Kennedy's condition only worsened. His skin grew pale, his voice weak. He pleaded for water, gasping for air. His brothers restrained him, believing that the entity was still trying to harm him, or them. Tasha, having compiled her findings, knew she was only scratching the surface. She needed to go deeper to truly understand the mindset of the family and what led to this tragic turn of events. Her next step was to interview some of the family members directly. But as she prepared to reach out, a mysterious envelope landed on her desk. Inside was a note written in a hurried scrawl. There's more to this story than you know. Meet me at the old church at midnight. Tell no one. Chills ran down Tasha's spine. The story was evolving into something that she hadn't anticipated. She had to tread carefully, but her curiosity was insatiable. The church, an old Gothic structure long abandoned, awaited her that night. As the clock struck midnight, Tasha stood at the entrance of the church, the weight of its history pressing down on her. The door creaked open, revealing a shadowy figure, as they stepped into the light, Tasha recognized him. It was Colin Ife, Kennedy's brother. Are you here to hear the truth? He asked, his eyes searching hers. 
And so began a revelation that would change everything Tasha thought she knew about the Ife family. The old church, with its stained glass windows now shattered and its pews covered in dust, echoed eerily with every footstep. The moonlight filtering through created a mosaic of colored light and shadows on the floor. The whole atmosphere was heavy with a mix of dread and anticipation. Before you judge my family, eh? Colin began, his voice trembling. You need to understand our history and what we've been through. Tasha nodded, pulling out a small recorder. I just want the truth, she responded. Colin took a deep breath. Our ancestors hailed from a small village in West Africa. They were guardians of an ancient relic that was believed to contain a powerful entity, a spirit that was neither good nor evil, but immensely strong. Centuries ago, this relic was stolen and a curse was placed upon our family that the entity would hold our lineage. Tasha listened intently, trying to absorb every word. The story was incredible, yet the intensity in Colin's eyes made it hard to disbelieve. Little Kenny, he wasn't the first, Colin continued. There have been instances in our family history where members showed mm, similar symptoms, but Kennedy's possession was the strongest we'd ever seen. Why didn't you ask to see professionals? Maybe a priest, perhaps? Tasha asked. We did, Colin admitted. They're afraid. They sensed the power of the entity and believed it was beyond their capability to exercise. We were on our own. Tasha thought back to the police reports, the distress calls, the injuries. The family was isolated consumed by the weight of their history and desperate for a way out. Colin continued. On the third day, during the early hours, something happened that we never spoke about, and we continued our prayers. The room grew freezing cold, an oppressive darkness seemed to engulf us. We heard whispers in a language none of us understood, and then a vision, an apparition of of a tribal leader chanting and dancing around a fire appeared before us. He pointed to Kennedy, then to the family's elder Sam, a chest that had been passed down for generations. Tasha interjected. The chest with the stolen relic? Colin nodded. We believed that the entity wanted to return. We made a decision to open the chest. Inside, amidst age-old artifacts, was a small, intricately carved stone idol. The weight of Colin's confession was palpable. He recounted how the family circled around the idol, chanting prayers and pleading with the entity to release Kennedy and return to the relic. A stone broke. There was a moment, a sudden, a rush of wind. The room got really bright with like an otherworldly light, and then silence. We thought it was over, but but Ken, Colin choked up. He he was gone. He was just gone. The interview lasted hours. By the end, the first light of dawn was creeping through the broken church window. Tasha, her mind racing, thanked Colin for sharing the family story. As she stepped outside, the enormity of the tale weighed on her. Was it the desperate imaginings of a grieving family, or a peek into an ancient world that modern society had forgotten? The lines between fact and legend, reality and myth, were blurred. She had one last lead to pursue, a visit to the village in West Africa where the Eif legacy began. Only there might she find answers that could bring closure to the family's tragic tale. Two weeks later, Tasha found herself aboard a plane, the sprawling cityscapes of London replaced by the vast landscapes of West Africa. The small village the Eif family originated from was remote, accessible only by a rugged dirt road that twisted its way through the dense forest and along cliff edges. Upon her arrival, Tasha felt the weight of hundreds of curious eyes on her. The villagers, while wary of outsiders, were polite, offering her food and shelter. 
The village was a maze of mud huts and communal spaces, with an elder's house at its heart. After explaining her purpose, she was taken to meet the village elder, a frail old man with wise eyes that held centuries of stories. She spoke to him about the Ife family, the relic, and the curse. The elder listened carefully, nodding occasionally. When she finished, he said, The relic you speak of, it is not just a symbol of power, but a vessel. It was crafted to contain an entity we call Ekwensu, a spirit of immense energy. It is neither evil nor benevolent, but its power is overwhelming. He continued, Many years ago, outsiders came, traders and explorers, and one of them stole the relic. Since then, Ekwensu has sought its way back, occasionally manifesting itself in the Eif lineage. Tasha, piecing together the narrative, asked, So, the exorcism, the apparition of the tribal elder that the Eif family saw? The elder sighed deeply. It was not an apparition, but a memory. The spirit showed them its last moments of freedom, its last dance around the fire before being trapped. As the sun began its descent, painting the sky with hues of orange and pink, the elder led Tasha to a sacred ground, a circle of stones surrounding an ancient fire pit. There, she saw carvings and symbols, eerily similar to the ones on the rug. The village held its own ritual here, seeking to appease and communicate with spirits so The elder voiced a cautionary note. Ikwensu is now free, but not yet at peace. It seeks its rightful home, which is neither the relic nor a human host. It seeks to return to nature, to the cosmos. Tasha, now equipped with knowledge and understanding, decided to return to London. Her story, once a quest for truth behind a family's tragedy, had evolved into a tale of ancient legacies, spiritual journeys, and cosmic balance. Back in London, she met with Colin, recounting her journey and findings. Together, they decided to return the idol to the village, hoping to set things right. The ceremony held in a moonlit night was mesmerizing. The villagers, led by the elder, danced and chanted around the fire, beckoning Ikwenzu to release its hold and find peace. As the idol was placed in the center of the sacred ground, a gust of wind swirled, lifting embers into the night sky, creating a spectacle of light and shadows. In the days that followed, an inexplicable tranquility enveloped the village, and even the Eif family felt a weight lifted. Tasha's story, when published, captivated readers around the world. It spoke of more than just the supernatural. It delved into heritage, belief, and the intertwining of past and present. It was a reminder that sometimes, to find the truth, one must journey beyond the known, venturing into realms of legends and ancestral memories. And as for the I family, they finally found a semblance of peace. Their ancestral ties acknowledged and their burdens, at least for now, laid to rest. As the echoes of our tale fade into the night, we find ourselves at the end of another episode of Black's Scary Stories. I hope you found tonight's tale as chilling as I did. This was the story of Tasha, the stolen relic, and the curse that haunted a lineage for centuries. Remember, dear viewers... The world is full of mysteries waiting to be uncovered. I'm your host, Old Nicholas Black, bidding you a good night.